Hi everyone, I'm Lee from Iridium Rock and Metal Reviews. Hope everyone's doing all right. Hope everyone's safe um, during this shitty time. But I've come to just do the conclusion or the roundup review, my final thoughts, if you want to call it, of Todd the Torah, Rejoice in the Suffering album. So if anyone, anyone's been following my videos for the last few days, I've been reacting to every song from the new album. So I won't do that often. I'll do it when I think it's something that's really special. You know, that there's, there's gonna be some this year, I will do it too as well. And I'll do a track by track reaction. And then at the end of that, I give a final thoughts, which is what I've got, what I'm doing today. So if anyone's been watching, like I said, they'll know that I absolutely love this album. So, I'm not going to talk in detail too much. I'm going to give a final scoring of every one of the tracks because what I've done since Friday, I've been listening to the tracks, obviously, after my reactions, the ones that I can listen to before, <laughs> before I listen to the next track that I haven't listened to. And so I've probably in total now, some of these tracks I've heard about six or seven times, some three or four times, and so on and so forth. So... I've got a good idea now and it could change again in the next few months you know but at the moment i've heard it enough to give a real score most of these scores have gone up <laughs> some of them have stayed the same so um and then what i've done this is what i do with every album when i rank it i rank every track and i've gone to the point fives here because some of them were too hard it was like I needed that in between bit. <laughs> so I've gone to the 0.5 um, decimal point, add all them scores up together and divide by 10, which is the amount of tracks that are on this particular album. I haven't included the bonus tracks because they really do feel like an extra. I don't think that's fair. I've reviewed it one to 10 because it really does feel like the proper album, how it's meant to, and like Todd Latoura said it does, with the three bonus tracks as an extra sort of, you know, and they are very experimental, I suppose, and different than the rest of the album. I don't think it'd be fair to judge the album on those three bonus tracks as well, although there's some really good bits about those bonus tracks. So, this is an absolutely outstanding album that easily is the best album so far this year. Let's just get that straight off the bat, although there's been some good albums this year. And just a quick plug for myself, not a plug, but if you've got Spotify, I've started off an Iridium 2021 Spotify playlist. So I thought that'd be really cool because by the end of the year, I really can get a good idea when I'm ranking every album as well, because I'm going to do it obviously best of 2021. So every album that I believe resonates with me, that I think is a good album, will be on that Iridium 2021 spotify playlist so if you want to just hook up to that and check that spotify playlist out it's already got some good albums on there and of course i know you can make your own playlists up but this one will be um you know i'll be adding albums to it so you can get an idea what these albums are like so at the moment it's got accept on there uh dead days is wet the brilliant album by wet it's got todd the Torah's album on there um, and there'll be a couple more as well. There, there is a couple more, but there'll be some more next this Friday because you've also got Joel Hoekstra's 13 album come out and you've got James Durbin, which sounds like going to be a really good album as well. So there could be some stuff added to it every time there's a, a decent album out. Well, in my opinion, obviously. So let's get on with this. Sorry about that. So <laughs> rambling on again. So every song, by the way, on this album is fantastic. Um, and... Uh, they're very high scores and I did say when I started doing this ranking I need to be more conservative when it comes to scoring uh, for a while now when I first started the channel I was probably giving everything a bit too much of a high score you know and then I thought to myself well, I can't keep doing that Every, I can't have everything being 99 out of 10 10 out of 10s I need to calm down a bit so when it gets like you know when you have a 10 out of 10 or a 9 out of 10 album there ain't going to be hardly any 10 out of 10s by the way because that's not the perfect every single little bit i love you know about every single song that's a stretch 
I need to be a bit more conservative um, with these albums, you know, give everyone more of an idea. Give, it becomes stupid if you start giving everything a 10 out of 10, in my opinion. Just a quick uh, about the production before we go into the scoring of the tracks. The production on this album is fantastic. It's raw. It harks back, you know, to fresh, freshy sort of production that you got. But some, but good fresh production because some of it was shit back way back when it first started out fresh. It was very sort of um, muddy. This is real basic, um, clear, and it. The instruments are just right up there. And it's like I said before, it's hard to get a balance in that where you have the guitar and the drums, the bass and the vocals all just really bright in the mix. Um, and these days, especially over the last few years, I've heard some awful production on albums that have spoiled it for me. And if you like, sounds too like a wall of sound. There's too many layers. Um, this is real, like, you know, it's almost when you've got your headphones on blaring this this album out, it's almost like you're there listening to um the guys performing it. Like it's real raw live sort of feel. I don't mean raw as in it's crap and it sounds amateurish, it's a fucking excellent production. But it's really punchy, but it's got that rawness about it where they haven't used too many layers. That was a point that Todd made that they were, he didn't do layer and layer and layer of guitar. He wanted a real sort of solid, you know, in your face production, but not too many layers. And that's the production is fucking excellent from these guys. They, Todd and um, Todd and Craig done brilliant with it. And obviously mixed by Zeus. And he's done an excellent job on that, on the mixing as well. So, it's probably the best production I've heard this year on a metal album, but you've got to remember that that production suits this kind of music. You know, I did mention the Wet album earlier. That's got a fantastic production, but that production wouldn't suit the Todd the Tour album because of the sort of music is. It's more AOR, melodic, heavy rock stuff. This is a metal album. And it's the perfect production for a metal album. Let's just get that straight away. So production, I've spoken about that. We're going to go, I'm going to go for every track, just giving a little, you know, a sort of conclusion, final conclusion and my final score on each track. Then I'll give you the overall score and then obviously what it got out of 10. Right, okay, we've got Dog Mart, our first track. This is a brilliant opener, sets the pace for the heaviness throughout the album. So much energy in this, in this song. Um, this is the one... I love the part where Todd gets his Dickinson voice on. And let's just say that the amount of voices that Todd uses on this album, I was not concerned, but thinking, you know, is it going to be too much? You know, listening to, I love Todd's voice as it is now in Queensryche, you know, and I thought, oh, am I going to like it? I like, I think every voice he does on this is just outstanding. The deaf black metal type voice for me ain't my sort of thing. But, you know, I'm glad he'd done it, especially as an experiment on the bonus track. But as far as um, all the voices that he uses across this album, I think it's fucking clever as fuck. Absolutely superb. So I love it when he gets his Dickinson voice on in the, in the middle section of this song. Um, this is like a more classic metal one with Pantera-esque chorus. Mental riffing. Like it has been all the way through this album. I'm not exactly sure what my first thoughts are with the scoring. I think I gave it an eight. I've, I've, where I've given the decimal, decimal point now, I've gone up a bit. It's 8.5 on this. So that's Dogma or 8.5. Pretenders, what, right up there with some of my favourite songs on this album. More classic metal sounding again. Nods a bit to Judas Priest, the vocal style. Although, controversially, I never have liked Rob Halford's voice. You know, I, I think his voice is better on the high end of the register. You're probably going to think, well, Todd sounds just like Halford. People would be thinking, no, he doesn't. He doesn't. He's he's different. He's definitely different. And what I love about Todd is he can hit the low register and he sound just as good as these high register, and that's that's amazing. Whereas we talk about Rob Halford, his low register is one of the reasons I don't like his voice. So nods to Priest, but for me, a lot better. Has such a catchy chorus on Pretenders. The keyboard's prevalent in this, which is a good touch. A slight 
Teutonic metal feel to me, like a German sort of Teutonic sort of sound. Slightly, slightly. Pretenders gets a nine out of 10 for me. I, I can't really remember what I scored it before, but it's a nine out of 10 now. Next is a real grower again for me. The third track, Hellbound and Down. This more and more listen to this, and I, I think it's so catchy the way it peaks into that chorus. First song for me with a real fresh feel. Even though, you know, Dogmata was heavy, this has a real frat, more of a, a natural fresh feel for me. Great riffing um, in this one. Another great catchy chorus. Like I said, it's sort of, when it hits that chorus, man, that's so catchy. I can't believe it. It's growing on me more and more. Um, the chorus is more towards classic metal. But um, this is the first time Todd uses slightly those black death metal type vocals but only for a few seconds in this one. Like I said, I don't know what I actually scored this one before, but it's an 8.5 now, that's what I've got it at. Okay, number four, Dark and Majesty, the first single that we got. Todd getting his Crimson Glory type, you know, priest vocals on again. Cool, odd time signatures in this. You know, he uses, they use those throughout this album, um, but only now and again, not too much. Don't take you out of the groove in any of these songs. Very freshy verses on this one, um, but the chorus is more Queen's Reich esque. Um, not sure if it's Twin League using this one or if it's just an effect on the guitar, like a, you know, a studio thing where they're just doubling up on the guitar. I'm not really sure, but it's cool anyway. It is an excellent um, song, and Dark and Majesty didn't disappoint when I first heard that. That's a nine out of ten. Crossroads to Insanity is next. The best out of the three releases before the album come out. 10 out of 10 when I heard it. It's a 10 out of 10 now. Great song. More familiar territory for Queensryche fans, I suppose. Classic metal sound. When heavy riff hits at that two minute mark, it's like so crunchy. What a brilliant job Craig Blackwell does all the way through this album. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Crossroads to Insanity is a 10. There ain't many times I give a 10. Let's put it that way. Like in general. <laughs> Sixth track in Critical Cynic. Very different, this one. Sort of holds back halfway through into the song. Almost in two parts, if you like this song. Uh, great drum work by Todd. What an amazing drummer he is. And what an amazing bass guitarist and guitarist Craig Blackwell is. Man, these two have just smashed this album. Again, a lot of atmosphere in this one. Cool breakdown at 2 minutes 30 before the solo. That happens quite a bit in this album. I've been, as I've been listening to it more, I've noticed that it, when it comes out of like maybe the, usually like the second chorus, there's like a really fucking heavy sort of breakdown usually or something really core. Cool. It slows down or and before the solo, it's very, very good. Um, and I'll give Critical Cynic an 8.5. Rejoice in the Suffering, the title track. Love this one. Back to the heavy sort of thrashy riffing, aggressive vocal style throughout this. But clean, but aggressive. You know, there's some real energy in Todd's voice in this one. Another brilliant, like this is a lot I said on the last one. Very cool breakdown again before the solo. Sort of twists and turns in this solo as well. Very cool. Very, you know, where has he been? Where has Craig Blackwell been? Because he's fucking excellent. Right, okay. Rejoicing Suffering gets an 8.5. Next is my, when I first heard this, this was my favourite track. It's still my favourite track. And that's Vexed. I can't say enough about this song. It's a masterpiece. It really is. It's my favourite on here. It's classic metal. It's galloping classic metal. Epic. Absolutely. Yeah, a perfect song. It's like I said, you know, in, the, in my reaction, it's like it was made for me. I know it wasn't. <laughs> but if anyone said, yeah, what do you want from a metal song? This is it. Vexed is a 10, easy. If I could give more, I would. Next up, second to last track, Vanguards of the Dawn Wall. Obviously, this is fucking heavy, thrashy. This is cool because it doesn't lose the heaviness, even though it's fast. A lot of songs, as I always say, lose their heaviness sometimes. You know, when it comes to getting faster, they sometimes lose that edge. This doesn't. Very overkillish, this one from the band, like the Overkill band, who are a great band, by the way. So much energy and aggression. If I want to listen to Fresh, if I wanted to listen to Fresh, and I don't mind a bit of Fresh now and again, this is the sort of stuff I'd want to hear all the time. 
Thrash would probably be my favourite genre of music if it was like this. <laughs> and I'd give Vanguards of the Dumball an eight. That's gone up a little bit, actually. I think it was a seven, but I don't know, it's weird. When, when you put these the singles that were released in with the album, it sort of opens it up, the songs up even more. It's fucking mad, absolutely mad. And it finishes off with the, you know what, what a perfect closer, Apology. I love this one now, and this is this is one, when I first heard it, I thought that is brilliant, but now it's a 10. It's a 10. The emotion that's gone into this, learning more about the subject matter as well, um, Todd's father, you know, committing suicide, and, and, you know, he feels like he never got to, well, he obviously never got to say goodbye to him because of the way... He, he passed away, the way he died. Subject matter just brings the emotion out even more. You know, what a great song anyway, but when you know the story behind it, it makes it, it just adds that more to it. You can hear the anguish in Todd's voice at the end of this song. It's just like, he sounds like he's in pain, but in a, obviously in a absolutely brilliant technical way that Todd is brilliant at. So often, like classic songs are made from really personal experiences, you know, um, and this is no exception. It's like it, it brings out all those feelings into a song, and sometimes that's when you get the best out of musicians. You know, I mean, I know it's not the same sort of band, but if you look at the Dirt album from Alice in Chains, their masterpiece, the theme running through that album and the anguish and pain that Lane Staley and in, you know, was in during that period. It, it makes it even more personal. It makes it somehow a masterpiece, even more than a masterpiece. Absolutely amazing. So, add all those scores up, which I've previously done, obviously, before I've done this. It comes to 90, 90 overall with all those scores added up, divided by 10, 9 out of 10 album. And you know what, to hit a 9 out of 10 for me now, because I'm trying to be more conservative with my scores, that is fucking hard to beat. You know, when I look at some of the classic albums, I've actually ranked on this channel, I've gone back and ranked albums, or done a, or yeah, ranked a band's discography, and I go back and I score it. I score each song, and I do exactly the same method, and some of the classic albums that I've gone back over that haven't reached 90 points, you know, or haven't reached 9 out of 10, you know. So, man, it's just an amazing album. I can't believe how good it was and how much it's actually surpassed my expectations. I expected a lot when I heard them three songs, but I got so much more with the rest of the album. Man, fucking hell. Todd and Craig have outdone themselves here. They've outdone themselves. They really have. What you've got coming this year, which could easily compete with this, is the new Queensryche album. I'm a huge Michael Sweet fan and Striper. Michael Sweet's got an album out and he's just on fire. Um, you've got a couple of albums next week. I really don't know if they're going to get anywhere near this. I really don't expect them to. Different styles of music, remember. Different styles, you know. This is a, this is very near a fresh album, but melodic fresh. And you know, you I suppose to compete with this album. There might be some really good fresh stuff coming out this year that could compete with this. But what you've got on this fresh album is Todd Latora and Craig as well. Yeah, Craig could. He's a fucking fantastic guitarist, but. It's not just about how fast you can play. It's the songwriting. It's the vocal ability. It's the guitar playing by Craig. You know what I mean? It's just, I don't know if it can be beat. You know, I think Testament, if I think of Testament, they're probably my favourite fresh band at the moment. But you think about it, their songs are, are absolutely fantastic. And the vocalist, I love the vocalist. But I suppose with someone like Todd, you get something more. You you get the sat, the songs just especially with twists and turns in his voice. So what you usually get with singers, they sing one dimensionally. You know they you know they they can't do the, what Todd's doing. He's he's done something fantastic and really inventive on this album. You know, 
I think you know what I think so now of this album. I absolutely love it. I recommend you go out and get it. Give this a go, even if you're not into real heavy stuff. The melody just will come. It comes so easy on this album. I know some people that have been talking to me saying they thought this might be a bit too heavy, but now they just, they've got it and they just totally get it. They totally get it. Thank you for listening. I've really loved this Toddler Tora reaction week or a few days, if you like. Um, and if you want to subscribe, red button, bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much. See you next time.